roof tenting adventure around the Italian coast and northern lakes. After catching a midnight Euro tunnel train from the UK, I'm starting in northern France with a lot of driving ahead of me. Good morning everyone, welcome back. Today you join me in the north of France in the, uh, excuse my French, Forêt Domeniale du Guinée, or Guinness or something. So I'm about a 20 minute drive just outside of Calais, got the Eurostar, sorry the Euro tunnel over last night, got here about midnight, um, so I've just parked up and now I've got a very long drive over to the south of France, which is probably going to take me about 10 hours or so in total. Um, just going straight down through the toll roads, across into Switzerland briefly and then back across into a little village called Châtel. So there won't be a lot to see today because it will just be a lot of driving, uh, but I will catch up with you when I arrive in Châtel later on. It was a long but easy drive across France and I stopped in a small village in the evening for a really nice meal before heading briefly into Switzerland, arriving in Châtel a couple of hours later. And good morning everyone, welcome to Châtel. It is a small skiing village in the southeast of France, right on the Swiss border, not too far from uh, Chamonix. Got a lovely spot here right in the hills, although I have got some extremely noisy neighbours over in the distance a little bit. They have been walking past a few times this morning, so I was woken up bright and early, let's say. Uh, plan for today, I will go down to the village and try and get some breakfast and stuff and then um, just go for a wander really, go for a hike maybe over into the mountains. Might try and catch a ski lift if they're running, I am not sure. And then I shall be making my way into Italy later on today. had a beautiful breakfast burrito from Wood Cafe, highly recommended. I don't know how much of a seasonal area this is, obviously it's going to be packed in the winter I imagine for the skiers, but I don't know if it's equally as busy during the summer or if this is actually quite a quiet period, it doesn't seem hectic at the moment. I found a working ski lift, although I'm not sure if I have to pay to get onto it or just hop on and take a ride. I have no idea where I'm going though. I'm going up, that's, that's all I need to know. I think I could have just driven up here to be honest, but oh well. Ski lifts are fun anyway. I've never done skiing, but I can imagine it's uh, it would be quite fun even just to come here in winter and see it all going on under the snow. Maybe I'll give it a go sometime. This is the latest technology in border control, an electric fence and a uh, weird metal round bridge. Off we go back into Switzerland. I believe mountain biking is the alternative summer activity here when the hills are bare of snow. There is a nice big tall mountain in front of me so I'm going to climb it. I could definitely have driven up here though. There are plenty of people doing it. I'm starting to get a 360 degree panorama as I climb higher and higher of all the Alps surrounding me. I think I'm near to the top of this little hill, hopefully. I don't really want to walk much further. You can tell I haven't done any proper climbing for a while. This is what I was after. View all around me, 360 degrees, nearly. Slightly blocked over there, but you can see all the way over there. And across all the way that way as well. You can see loads of little small towns and villages just dotted in the valley. Absolute stunning scenery. I'm going to get the ski lift back down if I can. Time is of the essence. I've still got a six hour drive at least to Cinque Terre. This is a much more relaxing way down. Wherever you... Mm, hey up. Oh, we're, no, have we stopped? Are we slowing down? We're slowing down. Anyway, as I was saying, you can hear the, uh, the bells of the cows just about anywhere you go. It's just a consistent 
persistent noise in the background. Good method for the farmers at least, I mean, they do their job, it wouldn't be hard to find them. I descended from the mountains and returned to the main village, enjoying a small snack before making way for Italy. The long drive was made a lot easier by the incredible scenery. Welcome to Italy! So I'm currently in the Cinque Terre National Park on the east coast of northern Italy. It's a little bit cloudy today, it has been raining overnight but I think it's meant to brighten up later in the afternoon, it should be nice tomorrow as well. I am planning on staying here for two days. I've driven down this little off-roady sort of dirt track for this evening's spot, or last night's evening, sorry, last night's spot I should say, and probably tonight as well. There were a couple of other people camping along here on the way as I came down. So I'm just going to pack up, I've got about a 20 minute drive to the city or town of Levanto um, and then I'll be catching the train and going along to see the five Cinque Terre villages. So first up is Monte Rosso, or Monte Rosso if I try and pronounce it in a local accent. So Cinque Terre, which means five lands, I believe, in, in Italian, is a, it's a national park, but more centrally it's a collection of five small little fishing villages along the coast, one of which I am in now. And uh, yeah, it's just meant to be a bit of a hotspot for scenic beauty and Italian culture, I guess. It's a bit of a tourist hotspot as well, so be prepared for that. So Monte Rosso El Mare, which is the northernmost village, is where I am now, and the rest of them expand along the coast behind me. I'm getting really screwed up with my languages at the moment. I've just come from France, and I know, you know, enough French to uh, get away in a basic conversation. I'm learning Spanish on Duolingo, so I would say that is probably my strongest language out of French, Italian and Spanish. But now I'm in Italy and my Italian is fundamentally very weak, so I'm just kind of throwing a mix of Spanish and French into the mix and hoping for the best, usually unintentionally. So I've come to the more central natural village area now, full of little small winding alleyways and lots of little bars and restaurants everywhere. Very pretty. I found all the nice looking food places now. I'm wondering how quickly I can reset my hunger levels. This is my second gelato so far today because I really like gelato. Sun has come out now and it's absolutely boiling. I kind of wish I brought my trunks with me and uh, had gone for a little dip. I mean, I could go back and get them, but meh. Anyway, so yeah, this is the first of five villages. So I'm gonna make my way over to Venaza, which is the second one down. I'm only planning on spending two days around this area, but we'll see. I might spend, I could spend an extra one, see how much I like it. The train journeys between villages take a matter of minutes, so it didn't take me long to reach the small but bustling village of Venazza. I think I'll just sit down and try and get a drink somewhere first. It's absolutely boiling. One of the main walking paths between the five villages is just behind me. I can't go on any uh, further because you have to have a ticket for it. There are plenty of stairs to climb around this place. Just coming up on the southern side, there's some sort of tower above me. Just going to see if I can get a view from there or not. Oh, I've come to the other end of the ticketing system checkpoint. Can't go any further. It would be a very nice walk to do. You can do it from village from top to bottom going th uh, visiting through all five. I think it takes you a couple of hours to walk it, excluding obviously times stopping in each village. Might be about three to four hours in total, which isn't too bad. They are relatively um, close together. I'm not sure where you get the ticket from to do the walk, but for now I'm just stuck to very small sections of it. I'm gonna try and see if I can find my way to 
the big tower over there. And then I think that should be most of this area covered. There are some nice little coves looking down over the cliff tops. I'm very tempted to come back tomorrow with my swimwear. Well, I've just had a lovely pizza and a glass of wine, so I'm happy now. Tell you what, food and drink is not cheap in this country. Nothing is cheap in this country. Parking for the day, well, about eight hours was 14 euros. Uh, train ticket for two days. So sort of any time between Levento, Levanto and Le Spezzi, I think, uh, the other town and all the villages in between. That was just under 50 euros for two days. So just under 25 euros a day. Not too bad, but a noticeable expense. And yeah, each meal probably easily looking at between 15 and 20 euros each time as well. And don't get me started on the toll road charges. Absolute abomination. UK roads might not be perfect, but hey, at least they're free. So I'm now going to get the train to Corniglia, which is the middle or third uh, village. Um, have a walk around there for the evening and that'll probably be it for the day. It's nearly six o'clock now, so I'm sure by the time I've had a walk around there, it will be time to head back. Cinque Terra village number three, this is Corniglia. Just had my third gelato of the day, naughty naughty. What I'm going to do folks is head off now and I'll probably come back to Corniglia tomorrow, give you a bit more of a tour around. It's only a small place but still it's nice to pick up all the little details that make it unique. Next train's in 20 minutes and I think they only run sort of once every hour after that so I don't want to wait for too long. Much nicer view this morning, no clouds, the sun is out, it is shiny and very, very warm. So I'm going to head back down into Levanto, which you can see, I think, just behind me down there somewhere. Uh, catch the train and pick up from where I left yesterday evening. First stop for today is Manarola, which is village number four, in some sense of the order. So I only briefly stopped in Corniglia last night because I wanted to get back before the trains became less and less regular. But I'll probably go back there later on and have another little walk around. It was a very nice little village. First thing on the agenda, as normal, is food because I am hungry. I have just bought the biggest sandwich known to man. Look at that, it's an absolute unit. That was potentially the biggest sandwich I've ever had in my life. It was an absolute monster. Could have quite easily have had half of that. Fortunately, there are numerous taps and fountains around these places for you to just fill up a water bottle and tip it all over your head like I do or just fill up a water bottle and drink from it, which is probably what you're supposed to do. I did also do that. This is probably the quietest village that I've come to so far. It was quite busy right at the start, at the near the train station, but going <clears throat> once you come out of that, it quietens down a bit. I take back what I said about it being quieter. I've only just found the uh, main street. It's kind of hidden on the other side of the village square but that's higher up so you can't really see around it. Gelato's back again. Can't control myself. I 
I've reached the final village of Rio Maggiore in the early evening, just taking in the nice scenery by the harbour. Overall I'd only scratched the surface of Cinque Terre, and you could definitely spend more days here to explore every nook and cranny hidden within. Each village has something slightly different to offer, but I'd hand it to Manarola or Venazza as my personal favourite. The next morning I set off to the northeast, heading for the great northern lakes of Garda and Como. I've made it to Sermione, or Sermione, or however you want to pronounce it, on Lake Garda, which I can see, or you can see, just over there. So there's a bit of a long strip as part of the land which goes into the lake, so I'm just walking along that now. And I'm anticipating some very nice views once I get to the end. So this is Italy's largest lake, and it is absolutely stunning looking across. Very traditional way of walking into a town. Quite quaint going through all the little cobbled streets, little stalls selling local produce to the typical tourist merchandise. Best gelato I've had so far, Nutella and cheesecake. There are so many gelato places around here. Much like how every other shop in Amsterdam is either pizza or weed, every other shop around here seems to be gelato, which isn't a bad thing. It's only six euros to go inside the castle, so I'm taking a trip around. You can see all the way down the peninsula that sort of splits the southern end of Lake Garda. You can tell it's a proper little sort of medieval town looking at it from above. In a way, it's got that sort of oldy baldy look to it. I mean, I know many places do, but seeing it from up here just gives you a bit of a different perspective. I got some food before camping in the hills overlooking the lake, with a very wet day to follow the next day. So I've had thunderstorms all night, it's been raining quite a lot and it's uh, probably going to rain a little bit more throughout the day according to the forecast. So uh, currently I'm on the eastern side of Lake Garda, a few, um, <clears throat> few hundred metres up, you can see the lake over there behind me. So what I'm going to do is take the sort of road that goes, loops around the edge of the whole lake go up to the top, back down, check out some of the little towns and villages, um, and then head over to Lake Como later on. Well, this is what we've got to deal with at the moment, folks. Not amazing, but oh well. Can't have sunshine and heat all the time, I guess, can you? Even in Italy. So I'm now in River Delgada on the northern end of the lake. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have a walk around and have a look and that's it really. No plans beyond that. Might be heading off to Lake Como a little bit earlier than anticipated at this rate. The small town of River Delgada combined elements of an old medieval aesthetic with the same colourful buildings like I'd seen in Cinque Terre. It actually reminds me of Vietnam slightly, just with the humongous mountains surrounding the outer perimeter of the uh, town. It's such a dramatic landscape, they're huge. I'm sure a nice sunny day would have made it ten times more appealing, especially given all the water activities available to do on the lake. I had a brief walk around before continuing on west towards Lake Como, arriving in the town of Bellagio in the early evening. This is a much quieter place compared to those of previous excursions. It's not a hectic nighttime atmosphere, it's calm and relaxed which is nice. Makes a change 
but it is very atmospheric still especially down all the little alleyways at night time where all the little cafes and restaurants are I was only going to come here for the evening but I'd like to see it all in the daytime when everything is open so I'll come back in the morning what's it like coming to North Italy in September you ask well put it this way this is probably the wettest tent box setup I've ever had to do I should have stayed in Cinque Terre. The weather is still a little bit uninspiring today, but it's still a nice view across the lake. It's cool seeing the mountains kind of fade into the clouds since the uh, clouds are quite low. It reminds me of uh, Vietnam again. Uh, more specifically Hoi An with all the shops selling leather goods and silk and sort of handmade things except uh, in this place it's about 20 times more expensive. If you want to live a cheap life don't come to Italy or to be honest anywhere in Western Europe right now. This place would be absolutely stunning when the sun is shining for no doubt, I've just been a bit unlucky. I made my way down the southwestern branch of Lake Como, and by mid afternoon, the sun had finally decided to make an appearance. I've just come to the village of Nesso, which is a bit further down the lake from um, wherever I've just been Bellagio. There's a waterfall running right through the valley down under this bridge, it goes right through the village. It's really, really nice. It was time to say Arrivederci to Italy, but I still had one of the best surprises of the trip awaiting for me as I crossed into Switzerland for the final day. I'm back in Switzerland now. This is possibly the best location I've found so far, even like ever. Right at the bottom of this valley with these huge mountains all around me, it's incredible. Perfectly clear night last night, stargazing was amazing. Saw quite a few um, shooting stars as well. I think this is going to have to be, potentially, the location for the next international trip. It's absolutely amazing. This is Interlaken, which I've just stopped through on the way back to France. Have a little look round on final tour of the trip. I was going to go to a little town called um, Gimmelwald near a, another town called uh, Lauterbrunnen, but uh, the road was uh, not closed, but uh, traffic. I don't know if there's an accident or something. So I might go back later. Uh, sorry, I might go back there later if I've got time. But I'll just have a look around here for now. It's very, very pretty. I'm definitely going to have to come back here at some point and try out all of this adventurous stuff. It does look really, really fun. I was originally planning on spending maybe two days in Switzerland and doing something like Fia Verata or something, but um, yeah, I just ended up wanting to spend more time at the places in Italy. But yeah, I think I'm definitely going to have to come back here maybe next year, do a Swiss trip rather than an Italian trip. I've been to Switzerland a couple of times before, but I've never really spent proper time there. I've been to Geneva and I've... Uh, we stopped at Switzerland on the um, camper van trip a couple of years ago. Stopped in Weges, that was again, that was a very nice town. Being in Switzerland, I naturally had one major priority on my mind. Let's just say I certainly made use of all the space I had in my car on this occasion. 
It's got to be one of the most expensive chocolate shops I've ever been into. Chocolate is all I can afford here. Everything else is basically Swiss watches. An individual item of which would probably cost more than my car. I think this could potentially be my favourite view of the whole trip so far. And I'm not even in Italy, how did that happen? I say so far, right at the end, because I'm going to be going back in about an hour or so. I feel like I'm leaving at precisely the wrong time. It's a lovely day in the most beautiful place. But uh, I must now make my way back over to France. Probably got another 10 hour drive, maybe more ahead. Um, and then I'll be catching the train back tomorrow. I will be back here though, mark my words, this place is absolutely amazing. With ideas for the next journey already forming, I departed Switzerland and made my way back home. This is the first overseas tent box adventure I've done and naturally I'll be aiming to go further and spend longer in the future. So for now, once more I simply leave myself with the same reoccurring question. Where to next?